Hello, we're going to be talking about 1.3 using midpoint today. The midpoint of a segment is the point that divides the segment into two congruent segments. Congruent means equal size. And the congruent symbol looks like this. You do a squiggle mark and an equal sign below it because it's very similar to equal itself. It just means equal in size. So if we wanna put this on a diagram, you need to eyeball where the middle is. But how do you announce to the world that that is in fact for sure the middle? You use what's called tick marks to say that AM is congruent to MB. So M is the midpoint of AB. So AM is congruent to MB, the segments are congruent, and that means that their lengths are congruent. AM is equal to the length of MB, so they're congruent and equal. A segment bisector is a point, ray, line, line segment, or plane that intersects the segment at its midpoint. A midpoint or a segment bisector bisects a segment. So if we just wanna pick one of these, let's show an example of a ray. I'm gonna call it M. And then a ray is something that splits it um, by going in one direction infinitely. So I'm gonna put another letter on there, C. So we can say that the ray MC, with a little arrow on the top to show it's a ray, is the segment bisector. Example one, find RS. RM is right here and it's 17. MS is unknown. And I know it's cutting it right there at M, but how do I know it's the middle? I know it's the middle because of the tick marks. So if this is 17, then this matching tick mark is also 17. So how long is it from M to S? Well, 17 plus 17 equals 34. So RS equals 34. Same thing here, we want RS. So MS is nine. The, the same tick mark is also nine. So nine plus nine is 18. So RS equals 18. Example number two. Point M is the midpoint of VW. Find the length of VM. M is definitely the midpoint, the middle of this segment, which means that these tick marks are the same size. And if they're the same size, then those two segments are equal. So to find the length of VM, I need to find the link, I need to find the value of X first using an equation. 4X minus one is equal to 3X plus three. I recommend that you combine your constants first and your letters second. So I'm gonna add one to both sides. 4X equals 3X plus four. And now I combine my letters. I'm gonna subtract 3X. And we get X equals four. But we're not quite done. We wanna know what the length of VM is. But in this case, it won't matter which one you plug it into because they're the same length. They're the same size. But let's go ahead and plug it into VM to be consistent. Four times four minus one, or 16 minus one is 15. So our final answer is that VM equals 15. Now pause this video and try examples A and B on your own.
Now also take a moment and pause this video and work through this small discovery activity where you are finding midpoints of segments on a coordinate grid. I am not going to show this in the video today. This is for you to explore independently. I'm going to skip down to the bottom and answer the last two questions to make sure that we have consistent answers in this part only. How did you calculate the coordinates of the midpoints of RS and VW? What you do is you average the X values, X values, and Y values. So the formula looks like this, big capital M to stand for midpoint. You add the X's and divide by two because there are two of them. And you add the Y's and divide by two because they are two of them. Now use this formula and check your work from up above to make sure that the values match your understanding. Now we're going to use the midpoint formula without a coordinate grid to find midpoints of segments. You could always graph this and check with graph paper, but sometimes you won't have graph paper available to you. Find the coordinates of the midpoint of each segment with the given endpoints. A is 1, 2, and B is 7, 8. So the midpoint formula, I'm going to write it again off to the side, big M equals x plus x over 2, y plus y over 2. So now I'm going to label which coordinate is which. So 1 is an x and 2 is a y. 7 is an x and 8 is a y. And now we substitute it into our formula. So I'm going to do a big M. And then you can use subscripts is what they're called to say which segment you're finding the midpoint of. I'm finding the midpoint of A, B. So then my average is going to be 1 plus 7 over 2. 2 plus 8 over 2. 7 plus 1 is 8 over 2. two 8 plus 2 is 10 over 2. So the midpoint of AB is going to be 8 divided by 2, which is 4, and 10 divided by 2, which is 5. The midpoint of AB is 4, 5. Second example, we're trying to find the midpoint of RS. Average of the x's, 1 plus 4 over 2. Negative 3 plus 2, the y's, over 2. 4 plus 1 is 5 over 2. Negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1 over 2. And for midpoints, it's appropriate to change them to decimals. 2.5 comma negative 0 0.5 because we know we're going to potentially put it on a coordinate grid. Okay, example number four. The midpoint of JK is middle midpoint 2 comma 1. One end point is J14. Find the port coordinates of end point K. So let's plot what we know. The midpoint of JK is, of M is 2, 1. So 2, 1. That's the middle. One endpoint is 1, 4. 1, 4. That's J. And this is M. Now, is that the whole length of the segment right there? No. <laughs> no, it's not. That's only one half of this segment. I need to extend down this direction to get the other end point K because I want the segment JK, not JM. So all you need to do is follow your slope to get to your next point. So our slope in this case is down three and right one. So then I just follow that down three and right one. and we get our endpoint K. Let's check that one more time. Two, one, 
one, four, down three, right one, down three, right one. Does that look like the middle? Yes, it does. So our end point K is at three, negative two. K is three, negative two. Now pause this video and try example B on your own. So U is at 3, 7. Thank you for joining me.